Did you know it was against the law for them to repo your car? Did you know that it was against the law for somebody to show up at your door, ring your doorbell, not even ring your doorbell, but take your car without your permission? That is against the law. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. So what I'm going to do is talk to you guys about how it's illegal, okay? And I'm going to go to the law. Everything that I give you, I'm going to reference back to the law. It's not going to be something that's coming out my mouth. I'm going to just get it out the way. I am not an attorney. I do not give legal advice. All I'm doing is giving you the law. I study the law, consumer law. We all have access to the law. We all should be studying the law. So if you need legal advice, seek that somewhere else. But what I'm going to do is prove to you how it's illegal for them to repo your car. You have never done business with these people. And we are allowing them to get away with it. Why? Because we don't understand the law. And they know that. They know that we are uneducated. This is why they got the courage to come to your house and just can take your car like that because they know that you don't know what you're talking about. They know you're not studying your law. So what I want y'all to do is go to 15 USC 1692 F unfair practices. I'm going to show you how it's illegal. So let's start at six taking or threatening to take any non-judicial action to affect dispossession or disablement of property. Let's read that again. Taking or threatened to take any non-judicial. What does non-judicial mean? That means that it was not an order given by the judge. It was not, it was nothing that the judge set in place. There was a non-judicial action to affect dispossession or disablement of property. So let's continue. There is no present right to possession of the property claimed as collateral through an enforceable security interest. There is no present intention to take possession of the property or the property is exempt by law from such dispossession of disablement. Wow. So the law is basically telling us right there that it's illegal for them to repo your car. It was nothing ordered by the court. It was something that somebody agreed on or put put together somebody else did this somebody else did this act you never even had a contract in place with the person who showed up at your door you have no clue who that person is you did business with capital one not abc solutions you don't know who abc solutions is why are we just letting these people tell us we owe them money you signed a contract with capital one not ab business so we got to understand right there that that is a transaction that happened between Capital One and ABC Solutions. You have no doing in that. That's illegal. That's actually identity theft. <laughs> they took your information and gave it to somebody else. Ooh, I mean, come on now. Y'all, we got to think. A lot of y'all is probably stuck at how is it identity theft. Well, I'm going to prove it to you. So go to 15 USC 6802 obligations with respect to disclose of personal information. We're going to start there. We're going to show you how. We're going to start at B, opt out. A financial institution may not disclose non-public personal information to a non-affiliated third party. I, I don't even have to go on. That, that said it all right there. It says a financial institution may not disclose non-public personal information to a non-affiliated third party. Capital One exposed your information to a non-third party. They, they did business with this repo guy and gave him your information. This is how he came to your door. But what is Congress telling us? It said a financial institution may not disclose non-public information to a non-affiliated third party. Come on now. How is these people getting your information? How do you think these people is just calling you talking about, oh, we know you and you like, I don't even know who these people are. You look on your credit report, there's different names. They don't even say Capital One. It says some collection agencies. These are collection agencies. Come on now. Okay, so let's continue. Unless such financial institution clearly and conspicuously disclosed to the consumer in writing or in electronic form or other form permitted by regulations prescribed under section 6804 of this title. So Congress is telling you if they have not gave you anything in writing, 
saying that they're going to give your um, information to that repo guy. That's illegal. That's pretty much what they're saying. If they have not given you anything in writing, letting you know that they were going to give your information to somebody, that's illegal. That's a violation. So let's continue. We're going to start at the end of A. It says that such information may be disclosed to such third party. Okay, B. Let's start at B. The consumer is given the opportunity before the time that such information is initially disclosed to, to direct that such information not be disclosed to such third party. And the consumer is given an explanation of how the consumer can exercise the non- <laughs> This is, I get excited to do at this part because this is my favorite part. The consumer is given an explanation of how the consumer can exercise that non-disclosure options. Okay, so let me break that down. Every financial institution should have gave you a non-disclosure um, form. This is you exercising your rights, meaning that they have a form in place, a non-disclosure form that gives you the option to say, hey, I want to opt out of that. I don't want you reporting to the credit bureaus and I damn sure don't want you giving my information to no repo man. You know, you can't get my information to anybody. There's forms in place, but they don't give us this stuff. They give us what they want to give us. They just let us sign away and push us on, you know, push us on our way and they do what they want to do with us. But Congress is telling you the law works for us, y'all. We got to understand and break down the law. It's telling us that you have the option. It's against the law for them to do these things. So this is how we get our remedy by pointing out the laws, telling them what it is. This is your remedy. It tells you right here. Now, I want to show you guys one more thing. So I want y'all to go to 15 USC 1692, 1692. So Google that. Now, we need to understand that the law actually works for us, y'all. The law works for us, okay? Congress tells us in this law that I'm going to um, read to you guys, they tell us how these um, debt collectors are being unfair. It pretty much tells us what to expect. They're giving us a heads up that they're going to be beating us out of our money. They're giving us a heads up that they got all type of slick stuff going on underneath the table. Congress tell us that, but we don't read our law. Okay, so 15 USC 1692. We're going to start at A, abusive practices. There is an abundant evidence of the use of abusive deceptive. What does deceptive mean? Misleading. Actually, let me... Let me pull it up. Let's actually see the definition of a deceptive. So the definition of deceptive, deceptive is giving an appearance or an impression different from the truth. Giving an appearance or impression different from the truth. Misleading. That's what it says. Misleading. <laughs> this is funny. Let's continue. Okay, so and unfair debt collection practices by many debt collectors. So I'm going to start it over. It said there is an abundant evidence of the use of abusive, deceptive, and unfair debt collection practices by many debt collectors. Congress tell you there, there's unfair um, practices that's going to be done by debt collectors. Abusive debt collection practices contribute to the number of personal bankruptcies, to martial instability, to the loss of jobs, and to invasions of individual privacy. So Congress tells us in a nutshell right there to watch out. It's telling us what's going on in the law. It's, it's telling us what's going on around us. It's telling us what's going on with these institutions. It's telling us what's going on with these debt collectors. They're not keeping the information from us. We just got to apply the information. We have to read. And this is why these people constantly, like I said before, is getting over on us because they know that we don't know. Taking money from us. We're putting money down that we shouldn't be putting down. They're taking our property and it's all against the law. I've told y'all before in another video that every violation that you find is a thousand dollars. So if they take your, your car from your home, that's a thousand dollar violation. They violated the law. Why? We just pointed it out in Congress um, laws. If they um, give your information to a, a non-affiliated third party, what? That's a thousand dollars. You just got two thousand dollars right there. Come on, keep finding more. It's so much stuff that you can find that these people are doing. 
but we're not taking the time to find it. Thousand dollar per violation. Whatever you find in the law and somebody have broken and done to you, a thousand dollars per violation. So a lot of y'all, you know, comment on my videos or message me, emailing me saying, well, how do I get my money back? Well, how, what do I do? What do I do this? When I'm pointing out the laws, prove your case. Reference back to the law and prove your point. Take it to court if you have to. File a complaint with the CFPB. We got to, all we have to do, just like when you get in a car accident, somebody didn't hit you and they didn't pay you through their insurance. You're pretty much building a case. Build your case. Come up with your exhibits. Your exhibits is your evidence. How do you have proof that they done this to you? Okay? And then reference back to the law. The only way that you can't get your remedy is if you're not doing what you're supposed to do as far as following up and pushing the law. You want to show that you had tried to come up with some solutions with these people before you try to take it to court. You want to prove your case. You want to build a case. Hey, I wrote a letter, told them it was against the law. I pointed out the laws. They still ignored my letters. Keep up with your files. Keep up with your paperwork. Send another letter. File your different complaints, okay? If you need more understanding and how to do these things, set up a consultation call and we will walk you through it. We will, we will help you, point you in the right direction in how to properly uh, put together a case, okay? You have to dive into it. You have to read it because you can't expect somebody to show you exactly what to do because once you get in court and I can go in there, I can tell you like, oh, this is what you need to do say it verbatim of what I said, but you get in there and you get lost because to be honest, you really not studying. You can read off a paper, Zach. I can give you something and say, hey, just say this. But if you're not studying, they can catch you up with something and, and say something and catch you off guard and you, you don't know what to say after that. So you want to study, y'all, okay? Study, study, study. If you need more understanding, if you need credit repair, reach out to me, okay? We have a system where we show you guys how to restore your own credit, what to look for on your credit report. We have the templates in place for you, the letters ready where you can send off your letters yourself, okay? We have a 24-hour um, communication group where you can ask any questions. We are in this together we are a community everybody should be learning this information okay so don't wait to be great and stay blessed